Well, good evening. It is Painting with Shauna on Thursdays, and I have sound. I'm looking over there and going, yes, I indeed have sound. You notice that the painting is low because at this point now in the painting, there's a lot of detail, and I'm going to be sitting down to do my painting. You'll be looking over my shoulder with while I paint. This past week, I taught at Range Lake North School, and I haven't done that since, whew, well, 2016, the last time, but I haven't taught art in a couple of years because of obvious reasons. So I have discovered something. I can teach art or I can do live streams, but I can't do both. I can't seem to keep all the balls in the air without getting really tired and only working. So I'm gonna take a hiatus after tonight um, on my live streams just for a little while. I'm gonna put that ball down. I will pick it up again when, time, when the time is right for that. And I'm going to focus in on my videos that I'm posting. And tomorrow at 4 o'clock, that's Friday, April 15th at 4 o'clock, the next video will be coming out. And that is lesson 9 and 3 quarters. Make sure you grab a seat on that, on the uh, ride to, out to Hogwarts. <laughs> Not that I'm doing anything about Hogwarts, except that it was the perfect number to put between lesson 9 and 10 when I slid a new uh, part of, a, of my acrylic one painting, ac acrylic painting 101 class, the basics for beginners. I can't actually teach what I have, I'm putting in for this extra video, but it's something you need to know before you get to lesson 10. So I hope that you will stop by and check it out. And I will, um, yeah, I've had a good week. It's been a busy week. We are on to this Ruby Crown Kinglet. You'll see how much I got done when I uh, change over to the other camera. So let's uh, just get painting because that's what we're all here for. Okay, just got to get myself settled down here. Put my mic so that it's fit. I apologize. Do not touch anything. If it's working, stop moving. <laughs> anyway, so in this one, um, I think you can see I have little lines here. So like I have for the last two of this series, I'm going to put a metal leaf over top and, uh, and decorate the background with the metal leaf. So I have just about everything ready to go here going to be interesting. Get my brush, get my, okay, get my paintbrush, and I'm going to do one of these, and then I have to put on an alarm. And I do have a microphone, yes. Oh, this stuff is getting pretty thick. I think it's old. Uh, which one should I do? Well, I'm not going to do one that's near the bird. I think I'm going to have to do one that's away from the bird because I still have a fair amount of painting to do and I don't want that gold to be in the way, the, the metal leaf. So I'm just going to paint the this in here. So every one of these paintings that I'm doing, I'm doing a different triangle pattern pattern in the background and uh, I will do a blog post where I share them all three together so that you can see the different patterns and you might have one that is your favorite and I might have one that's a favorite I don't know so so it's interesting to be doing triangles and uh, playing with that it it got me back into looking at fabric because fabric is often 
got some really great patterning designs on them. I used to be a quilter in my old life before I went over to painting in 2012. And I, uh, okay, I think I've got it pretty good there. It now has to sort of sit for 15 minutes. So I'm going to put a timer on my iPad here for, so that I can see that. And then we will put some metal leaf on there. And timer start. Okay, iPad's working. The adhesive is uh, drying off and, and uh, going to get to tacky. And then we will get to the other part of the gold leaf. So this one, it's triangles and it's got lines in it, but it's more solid than the other images. Okay, so here we are. We're at the kinglet. I've got my board here. I've got my spritzing. Yep. I've got my spritzing to keep everything fresh and clean and, and going. And let's, where are we at? I've got a good start on the face. And I'm kind of happy with the beak-ish. You know, it's still got some work to do. I think, well, what I want to do is get this underneath part done because I want to show you how I do the glazing because there's a hint of that glazing, that, that yellowy green right here. And I wanted to talk to you about what, what, what color I chose and why I chose the color to mix for that. So let's work on the underneath the belly. Just trying to see what, what might work better for. Okay. So I've got my dagger brush from uh, Rosemary and Company. It's out of the UK. It's an ivory dagger. And I, I love this shape because it allows me to do thick lines and thin lines so and I'm thinking sort of feathery thin lines in here would be a good idea wouldn't, wouldn't it okay so I'm looking at got a little bit of this dark and I'm gonna put this in just get it sort of positioned here but see so you can get really sort of feathery lines in here and this is going to dry and then I'm going to come and put th other things over top. But I'm looking at these shapes in here and getting that darkness in. I'll put another layer of lighter over top. So if you're new here, well if you're not even new here, if you're on Facebook or you're on YouTube, Give me, you know, say hello and tell me where you're watching from. Um, if you're new here, I have a newsletter that goes, well, kind of out every week, not always. This week was one of those weeks that got away on me, so the newsletter didn't end up happening. Um, but I, I do a, a fairly regular, I'm pretty good at communicating and telling people what's going on. Um... And that's just at my website at dancingravenstudio.ca. And, uh, you know, if you're on Facebook or YouTube, subscribe and like or follow or whatever the term is in meta these days, Facebook these days. Okay. I'm happy with that. Now I'm going to come in with, oh, I see there's a little bit more of that darkness here. I just want a little bit more. I'm just going to put a tiny bit on the tip of my brush, hardly any, just so that I can just touch this area here and let that dry. Perfect. Okay. Now, let's get a little of the 
light. You will have noticed that I got most of the, um, I probably need to just come in close to the bird. Most of the blue I did a second coat on so that it looks nice. I can still see that I might have to come in and be careful with the, uh, with this gold leaf when I get there, but. So let's get that a little bit lighter. So this is a, I'm getting a value eight, I think about to get in here. And then I'm gonna bring my trusty Princeton Dakota, dampen it, 6300, and I'm just gonna move that paint around. So it's just this push and pull of getting the paint where you want it and then moving it to where you actually need it to be when you have because you don't want to, I don't want to put tons of paint on. Clean my brush off, dry it off, and soften the edge there. There we go. So we went out owl hunting. We saw one owl. We were glad to see one. Two years ago we were seeing eight or ten. Um, owls at a time but this year is just one now i can't see any comments because i can't upload and download at the same time so if you have any comments or any questions as we're going along just put a put a question underneath or leave a comment and i will get back to it right after the stream is done Last week I bailed out of here because there was something else going on. I don't remember. I'm just going to get that dark back in here. There. Okay. Clean that up a little bit. Okay. Okay. So this should be dry enough now. I can come in with a value or two lighter and I'm just going to build that up now. No, that's too light. Let's just go to value four. So I've added value three and now I'm into value four and I'm just putting a little bit of value four over the value three so that the value three sneaks through but is not um, so strong that that's all you're noticing. And then what I'm going to do is bring in my Princeton Dakota. <laughs> there. And I'm going to just tidy it up and pull it and pull it, pull it, pull it, pull it over top. Yeah, there we go. Ah, oh, I think that's pretty good right there. I can see right about here we have some lightness that is capturing that feather, that area is capturing the, um, and I don't know if that's a value five. I'm going to try it and see. Ooh. Um, no, I think it could be even a value six, just a little bit lighter. And we'll just put little bits of that uh, on here. And we'll just, now I don't want it into the feathers, so I'm just going to clean that off. Oops, might help if I had the right side of the brush up. <laughs> okay. Could be even a little lighter than that. So let's get some value seven, just a hint of that value seven. just to get that a little lighter in this area here and coming down here. Take that Princeton Dakota and move that paint around just to touch, just to touch it. And if it's too much, you just dry the, take the brush and move the rest of it. Okay, what do you think of that? I'm thinking that looks pretty good. I can see that it comes down a little further into here, so I'm going to put a little bit more paint on and then just blend it out a little bit. 
use my finger to remove some of it. The other brush that's really good for blending is my uh, Simply Simmons Bright. And it's uh, a very inexpensive brush, but it does exactly what I want it to do. It moves the paint around gently and is, is not quite as stiff as the Dakota is. The Dakota is quite a stiff brush. I will put the list of brushes that I use underneath the, uh, underneath. I think we're getting close to it being perfect tacky. We've got another five minutes yet. Okay, I like that. Okay, let's get onto a different brush and so let's move this back this way. We're going to uh, build up the wing here and I can see it's pretty dark and then it has these lighter feather areas. So I'm going to darken it. Oh, I'm going to take it a step lighter as it comes over the shoulder. It's lightening up as it comes here, but not quite that much. Okay, where is that? And we'll blend this together. There we go. That gives a sense of movement. Now we need a sense of roundness on this shoulder right in here. So we're going to bring in some of the lighter value here. And then I'm going to bring my Simply Simmons and just touch it around. And I see that there is some of that really big dark as it comes here. So we're seeing that right there. And, and there's here. I don't want it quite that dark. I'm going to bring in some of that value four. I'm going to move my chair a little closer. Oh, yeah, I'm reaching a little far. Value four here. Blend it with that value. There we go. And push it out. Now, this area is far too light. And I think we're ready, actually. So... Why don't we do that gold first? <laughs> Put that over here. Okay. Now, this is always the fun part. Doing it standing up, it makes quite a mess when I'm doing it this way. Um, it's much easier when I'm sitting down to do it. And probably is not the wisest choice to be just grabbing it and there you go but that's how it's going to work today i'm just taking pieces that i have of from other uh, so fly away <laughs> i'm putting that on okay Putting some on there and there's a little bit here that oh I can just push that down okay so I'm just using sections of the the metal leaf that I uh, had left over from other times and as always I will be doing a one minute video just pounce it down gently 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 Get it in place. And then I'm going to come in and gently, gently remove the gold leaf. Oh, 
Okay. And it's all over the floor. Bye, gold leaf. <laughs> I'll vacuum it off you later. <laughs> if it was real gold, I would probably not be letting it go on the floor to be vacuumed because that would be... Yeah, okay. I'm going to have to come in and when I can sit flat and, and correct these lines a little bit more. And I see I've got a little area here that's missing. I don't know if I can put another piece in there. Or if I just missed putting glue on that section. Yeah, I missed gluing that, that section. So I'll make that correction later. Oh. There we go. There's our 15 minutes. So that's the shape that I'm going to be doing all the way through at a sort of a randomish pattern and turning around. <clears throat> so when I get finished, I will post the picture of this up when it gets done. Okay. Now, <clears throat> you know, I think that it's time I need to do a little bit of that 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 yellowy green that we're seeing. So, what am I going to do? How am I going to do that here? I think I'm going to use that and I'm going to use this. Okay, so the color that I chose to use, pull it out of here. Okay, the color I chose to use is this green gold. It's a very, um, here, that's what I'll do. It's a very chromatic gr yellowy green. Huh, and that might be helpful if I put that out on my palette. Here it is. I forgot about that part. There you are. And I chose this color, this green gold color, because it, um, I'm sure there was another one. Maybe there's not. Maybe there's only one. Last one. There it is. Because it is really, it's transparent. And when you want to do um, a, an overlay here, so this is the containers that I, I store my, um, my paint into when I'm making small amounts. And you can see that I have a small amount of that green gold in there. <clears throat> and it is quite acidic, like it's quite a bright color. So I'm just going to put a little bit out here. Um, here we go. Get some out of my palette paper. And then we can build it up from there. Make sure I don't get it on me because I'm really good at getting paint on me when I'm not wearing painting clothes. <laughs> and I Choose not to wear painting clothes on the live streams, which may not be the best thing in the world. Okay, so we have our, okay, here's the two brushes I wanted. So I'm going to use my dagger because I like the shape of it. Oops, we're up here, we're not in there. And it spritz these greens. I'm going to start with the darker of the green. Now I chose this paint because it is transparent, even though I added some other colors, I, like I added white and I added other opaque colors, there's still enough transparency to it that it's just going to be there but not cover the whole thing really um, harshly, like not, I want it to be that you can see through it. I don't want that there. So I'm going to bring my brush and I'm just moving it along and moving it around where I can see that green. And I see there's a hint of a little bit of lighter green 
I just want a little bit. I don't want too much because a little goes a long way when you're glazing. So I'm just gonna, it gives variations. Again, bring in my brush and gently pull. gently pull just just to keep it interesting looking and like it has some variations in it there we go there what do we think of that oh I like that that's turned out really well a little touch and it makes such a difference okay Now we're into the small. I'm just going to let that dry and I might come in and put a little bit more of the gray underneath or over top. I'm no, I think I'm happy with that. Okay. So now we're into the little brushes. We get into smaller and smaller brushes. This is my, my new favorite. I have lots of favorite brushes. This is a Princeton mini detailer liner zero, uh, 20 over zero. This is a number one, and you can see the difference of size. Can you see the difference of size? So this one gets a really fine lines. This one gets long, thin lines. So I'm gonna use the number 20. And I'm looking at this wing area here because it's dried. But what I wanna do is get this area here that is a lot um, darker than what I have right now. Yeah. Okay. So it is a value five. So it's really quite a low value, but I want to get that shape in there so that I can get all of the shapes correct. Now I'm just putting that value in place and it, it's lighter here at the top and it's getting darker as it goes around. So I'll take some of that value four and mix it with that value five and bring that value down on this side a little bit. So that it's still there, but it's not um, there. Now that's a huge shape compared to what I'm seeing, but I'm going to come and correct that here in just a second. There we go. Okay, so let's get, we'll let that dry and we're going to come in and I see there's a pale here, um, tip of these feathers here that I just see I'm going to take a little bit off on the back of my hand and I see that it goes step, 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 step. They're just little feathery marks here. They're not a solid line. They're just there. Okay. Okay. Because I'm working in such a small area, this little brush is just perfect for that for coming in and getting that shape correct and bringing it up and into here okay okay and we're going to take a little bit of that value five i want to thin it out Okay, what I'm going to do is let's mark these, these feathers in that I'm seeing. There's a line here that goes to about here. Um, I'm seeing that there's some lightness there, but I'm going to use my, take a little bit of that paint and just move it around there so that it gives that shoulder some definition. But I don't want it to be as light as it was. And a little bit there. I move that little bit of paint around 
I'm always moving little bits of paint around to get that those very special There we go. That's better. Get those little tiny details. Value five. So if you remember, if you have any questions, actually, no, I need to do the value uh, three, the darkest value. I don't tend to work much lower than a value three in most of my paintings. Um, I find that that's dark enough, but then it gives me leeway, like when I needed the eye to be darker, to have that value two in there, but really not have it any place else. Because if you get too dark too quickly, what ends up happening is you end up losing um, what's actually happening and, and you lose your definition because if it's just too dark, you can't even hardly see it. And I even know that when I go to print off the, the photos, I have to lighten them by 25 to 40 percent so that they print off at a what looks great on my screen is not looking so great on my um, board. Okay, I'm going to get this in here done. Let's say that's a value, maybe it's a value four. We'll put it down and see. Yeah. I'm just going to get that thicker paint in. And then I'm going to take a little bit of the value three and put that in as well, just to sort of get it in place. I don't want it creeping into that area, but it can be controlled. Now, one of the things you will notice, it seems it's like it's really light now, is that acrylic dries darker than when you put it on. Um, watercolor dries lighter and oil doesn't dry to any other value than what you see. Uh, other than if it sinks in, then that's a whole different thing. Um, I don't see sinking in so much in acrylic. Okay, I'm still using this tiny little brush because I'm at that point where that's what I want to be putting in. And I'm noticing that there's this sort of dark ridge in here that it's not really, really dark. It's just darkish. So I'm just going to put that paint in and soften it and soften it so that it's in that place there. And I see that there's some dark here. I don't need much paint to make it work and make that impression be. So I'm not sure when I will be back to live stream. It might not even be till the fall. Um, we're traveling and we have company in the summer and I'm teaching until the middle of June. So uh, it may not be till the fall. Uh, I'm not doing an annual show this year. So that gives me a little leeway to, to sort of play. And, and I'm planning my next set of videos for recording. And I have to tell you, I am having fun. I will be doing a series of color exploration, a color exploration series that I totally have fun. I'm having fun planning. I got some of the images um, printed off today so I can start thinking about how I'm going to approach it. So I'm quite excited about that. But there are more on that when they come out. I will be doing more uh, like the color exploration and trying different things that I don't normally get to try uh, is what sort of the goal is on my YouTube channel is to play more. I spent the first 10 years just trying to get my skills honed and now I'm ready just to try different things that I've wanted to try for a while. but 
with the busyness of everything, I didn't get to. So now I'm just making the time to do it by doing YouTube videos. So we will have fun, fun, fun exploring different paints and different paint combinations and how they do and um, how a painting looks if they're painted with them. And yeah, I am quite excited about it. Just spritzed my uh, paint again. So I'm just coming in with some light here and just lightening up. And I see that there are some that are going over, the feathers are going over. And there's all this little textures here. And this brush is just perfect for, for all those little textures, those little captured areas of light. See, there's some dark there and these little yeah now you know I like my details if you've been following me for any length of time you know that I like my little details I'm like makes my heart beat faster I have a Sunday morning group we meet every two weeks on zoom and we all love our little paint brushes and uh, there it's just a, a great group of people that you know sort of think the same way I do they don't paint the same, they don't paint in acrylic. None of them do. Uh, there's one person who paints in watercolor. Um, I'm probably, I am the only person who paints in acrylic. And I do that because my husband has a lot of allergies and I'm not, it's just too stressful to, to bring in oil. And it doesn't dry very fast. I don't have a very big room and yeah, there's all sorts of reasons. And I like the fact that the thing I like about about acrylic is that it dries fast. The thing I don't like about acrylic is that it dries fast. But, you know, it has enough going for it. Anyway, there are lots of fun and, and it's a great group of people. And we have interesting discussions about art and about careers and about technical stuff. And, and I just... Yes, I adore that group. Hello to you if you're watching any of you. <laughs> and if you are, say hello. <laughs> it's lots of fun. It's hard when you live really far away from everything to sort of find a group that thinks like you. There's very few people in Yellowknife who... And, and I don't have a ton of time, so it's also a time issue. I did go out to Knack for the first time. That's where, where we have uh, our plays and our music, you know, music stuff. And a fellow named Ari Snyder, who has recently moved to Yellowknife, um, is uh did a, pia a piano uh concert oh my gosh it was just so wonderful i really had a good time just yeah i've always loved the piano so it was fun to go and listen and oh yeah he could play i'll tell you Okay, so we're getting some of the darkness in here. I'm seeing some of that lighterness in here. That's, this is all the little detail work. Really. I'm happy with around the eye because I did work on that the other day. I, or yesterday, I guess. want a little bit of lighter here but I don't want it to be that light so I'm going to just take my brush and I'm going to touch it and move it around so that it lightens up there there that's good we should work on maybe the crown feathers 
Well, how much time do we have? We have just not that much time left. So I'm going to put in the the the, crown, the ruby crown feathers. My goodness. When this thing stands up on end, all of its little crown feathers, I have a hard time getting a picture of it because it happens, you have to be ready immediately. And I'm not always, I need a second set of hands. I need another person with me who can manage the little call thing and Okay, so I'm looking at all these shapes and I'm just building up the darkest parts and then I will come in and do um, the lighter highlights that will give it form. Anyway, they're pretty fun birds, I'd have to say. So the snow bunnings are back. The... Uh, Mountain bluebirds should be going through pretty soon, so I'm hoping to get out to look for that one here. Um, after tomorrow morning, I think I'm going to try and get out tomorrow for that and get out as much as I can because they come through quickly and then they're gone. And I have the last two years seen them in the exact same spot, so I'm... Uh, Gonna go back to that same spot. It's about 20 kilometers, 30 kilometers out of town. And uh, they're pretty little. I, get, I, I got a great picture that I'm hoping to paint here. A couple of, one that with it flying. So it's quite a dramatic picture with its wings open and the light, of course, you know, if you're getting it during the day, the lighting, of course, is better early morning or uh, late evenings because you get to see um, this. the light is lower and striking the bird in a, a way that works out for seeing more of the bird. But you don't always get the, the lighting that you get. When you see them, you get what you get. Okay, so we're just coming in and I'm building this little crown up. Isn't that the prettiest little crown? Oh my gosh. <laughs> yes. Yes, yes, yes. Now, am I getting too low? I think I pulled that one in a little too close to the eye. So I'll just back it up. But I'm just sort of, I can back up enough on my chair to see what is working and what's not. So let's get that next value lighter. We're at value six chroma eight. So these are very chromatic colors. Uh, all of this is a low chroma color. So this is yellow ochre that I've used, uh, brought down with um, uh, burnt umber and ultra and burnt umber and raw umber for um, I concentrate here um, for the uh, the value of it and then brought down further with the neutralized gray which if you've watched my I think it's lesson oh what is lesson I don't know if it's lesson eight or lesson nine was the the chroma uh, making the neutral gray um, making the neutral gray for um, for changing chroma on a color. When I start to play with these color ones, I'm getting ready to record the beginning of May, so I try to do them in groups, and then I can edit them and add them in and bring some life, you know, do that whole work instead of recording one at a time. I try to be a little bit efficient about it, but I'm really, um, okay. Now that light, I don't want it that strong. So I'm just going to soften it a little bit and I see I left that one dry. So I'm going to, it's not quite totally dry, soften it. Um, yeah, so I'm gonna. I'm looking forward to uh, 
the, that series of exploring colors. I've been buying paint um, just because I see a color and I see a different pigment and I think, oh, that'll be interesting to play with. And now I'm going to start to play with them. So I'm kind of excited about that. So a couple weeks ago, I asked for colorful birds and I actually went into my, my stash of pictures from Australia and I found a rainbow lorikeet, which is going to be so perfect for all this color exploration because a rainbow lorikeet has red, yellow, blue. The only color it doesn't seem to have is pink or uh, purple. <laughs> it has yellows and oranges and reds, red eyes. So it's going to be perfect for this exploration that I plan to be doing here. Those will probably come out later in August. Okay. So I'm going to let that be for right now. I, what I think I'm seeing on this is that when I get them the right value, I'm going to have to probably do just a little glaze of a, of a pure color over top to sort of make them stand out more red and not be um, just... Uh, because, you know, you add white. And what happens when you add white to red? it turns into pink and it's not really the colors I'm seeing and I probably should have added yellow in to get what I more what I'm seeing and I'll probably do that always learning I don't play with red that often so I want to thank people who have subscribed to my YouTube channel I am now up to 77. Woohoo! That's very exciting. Okay. Um, I see that I got one of the shapes. I started to lose this shape here. So I'm going to come in with some of that and get that shape back in place. Oh, that's good. I'll just round it a little bit more. Okay. Oh, I like that shape. Bang, we're there. It's awesome. When I'm finishing a painting, I think, oh, it's going to take forever to finish the painting. And then all of a sudden it's like, oh, I'm there. And it's surprising, so it's, I love that about painting. So what do you think? I am going to miss doing the live streams, but with all those balls in the air and I don't want to drop the school one, um, it just seemed that, that to be the wisest decision right now is to sort of back up and uh, acknowledge that I'm only one person. There's, there's not four, four of me, sadly. Sadly, sadly, sadly. I wish there were four of me. Okay, so I'm just coming in to draw these feathers. Oops, I don't have enough moisture on my paint. It's not thinned out and so that it's not pulling off the brush properly. So if that happens, just Take a little bit more water and thin out the paint a little bit more. And then there's a feather here that comes here. And it comes over this way. And then this one comes this way. Now I'm making it a little bit brighter than it actually is, but I don't think that's going to be a problem. Okay, and now I have... Okay, this coming up here, and it comes all the way across, and it's pretty straight. This one comes straight there. 
get some more paint on my brush. I haven't been to a show in, since 2020, so it was really nice to sit there. I wore my mask. Most people were wearing their masks still, even though the mask mandate is off. It's still hanging around that COVID and making people's lives difficult. And we seem to be finally, they're acknowledging we're in the sixth run of it in, uh, in Canada. So yeah, it's keeping life kind of interesting, but not interesting. So I'm just going to soften those lines. I don't want them to be so strong that that's what you're noticing. I just want them to be there. So what do we think about that? Okay. Well, why don't we, what else can we work on here? Um, I think I'm going to work on this part of the feather. Again, I'm still working with that teeny tiny and get that lines in place. So wherever you're at, have you had spring migration starting to happen and what birds are you seeing? If you watch my Facebook page, I'll do a blog post about the birds I've seen. Every week I'll do a blog post about that now. Um, and I will share pictures of birds that I've seen coming up to Yellowknife. Okay, so that's a little thick, that line, but no, I want this one. So if it gets a little thick, I just come in with my Princeton Dakota and I push the paint closer to each other, to it, and make that line turn thinner. There we go. Just means that I had too much paint on my brush and I needed to pull a little bit off before I... Okay, and there is... You know, I'm just feeling like that, that area is not finalized enough. So let's do that. We're going to start with our value four. I'm going to bring in a nice amount of paint by using my Scepter Gold Synthetic Sable combination because I find that it really does grab the paint nicely and you can get enough on. Now I'm going to use my Dakota 6300, the Princeton Dakota, just to push that paint back on. And then what am I noticing? That it's darkening as it comes here. So getting, using that, that softer brush that holds more paint, I will bring in some more dark paint right along here. And I see where it goes, the dark paint. And it comes right in here. And it's flatter here, so let's flatten that out. Okay, so I see I have a ridge in here too. I'm going to get rid of that ridge. You don't want anything that's going to catch the light. Now I've lost the shape of that feather. It's gone too far, so I'm going to bring in... Where are we at for time here? We've got a few minutes. I'm going to bring in and get this shape correct by bringing in that lighter value that's on the underneath, underside of the bird. I'm going to just work on getting that shape correct. And then I'll come back and I'll spread it around with the Princeton Dakota brush. And a little bit goes a long way. Oops, take that brush out of my hand. Okay. Uh, 
I'll just pull it, pull it, pull it. And I can see it's even a little lighter than that. Oh, we're not far from being, our time being over tonight already. My goodness. Time goes fast when you're having fun. Okay. Bring the Dakota in. Pull it along. Oh, I've got a little bit of extra paint there. Let's get rid of that. And then pull. Okay. I think that's a much better look to that. We just have a couple more minutes, so let's see if we can put some of those lines in that. There's some of the paint off of there. And let's see what we see here. We see there's a little bit here. And then it starts here. And it comes along there and it ends here. So spring went away and winter came back, but I think a lot of people are feeling that like that right now. We had a little bit of warm weather and then it's gone back to minus 30 at night and April is just a sucky month. <laughs> But I'm, it's not bad where my parents live. I don't even know if they have power yet, so they might not even be watching yet. Um, they've been out of power since three o'clock this morning. They've got that major storm that went through, is going through Manitoba, the three day blizzard, uh, the Colorado low. We always like to blame everybody else for our, our weather. So that, that infamous Colorado low that, that, uh, hits uh, Manitoba and, and uh, northwestern Ontario. And I remember that even when I was a kid, that was something they called it, Colorado Low. Well, there we go. Our time is up. I cannot believe that. I will share this picture when I get on to the other side. Okay. Roll the chair out of the way. So thank you for joining me. Uh, if you're going to want to see what I'm up to for the next while, while I'm not doing the live streams, uh, you can check my blog out. Every Friday I seem to be putting out, or every second Friday I'm putting out a post. Uh, uh, so you can see and go to my social media, the Facebook most likely, that I'll put, well, I'll put blog posts up here more regularly because the birds are coming back. So I hope you well, head on over to dancingravenstudio.ca uh, and sign up for my newsletter. And if you're on YouTube, subscribe to my channel. And I will see you on the flip side. Uh, it, it, in other ways, I will see you. I'm still going to be very much painting, but uh, that teaching and doing this, just the two things together, are one too many. So this ball is going to be put down for... For a few months and I will be back. I promise because I really actually like doing these live streams. They're kind of fun. Anyway, we will talk to you later. Have a good week and go out and see what birds are coming back.